Hi everyone, Oli here, and this is my fifth edition of Oli Ranks, where I'll be ranking the fifth season of Classic Doctor Who. So this is Patrick Charlton's second season as the Doctor, and season five is referred to as the Monster Season, where every story, with the exception of any of the world, pretty much had a new monster or at least a returning monster. And then also, most of these stories are based under siege stories, and they work to some extent. So for first-time viewers. As new here, I will be ranking these stories from my least favorite to the favorites of the season or whatever. So to start off, in seventh place is the Ice Warriors, my least favorite story of the season. This story honestly could have been been as good or at least even better than Tomb of the Cybermen, as if if the story was two parts shorter. The Ice Warriors okay, they were okay. They had a good debut. I like the theme of machine versus nature and all that. But the patient issues is what really ruins the story, what brings it down. The acting was okay though, I didn't really care for the supporting cast. I mean, Victoria, she did a good job, despite the fact she was kidnapped. And Jamie, he didn't really do much of a great job, considering the fact he was, I think he was paralyzed at one point and was pretty much dragged around all over the place. <laughs> so I'll be giving this, so I gave this story a 5.5 out of 10. <clears throat> in sixth place is The Wheel in Space, The Return of the Cybermen, and to be honest, they weren't on par as opposed to the previous three stories they were featured in, writing-wise. Despite the story dragging in the middle, this, the beginning of episode 1 was actually really good. Because it pretty much had the Doctor and Jamie exploring the Silver Carrier and explored their strengths as a duo. But we also had the debut of Zoe, one of my favourite companions, and she had a good injury her, and the writers wasted no time in establishing how different she was to her predecessors. And her predecessor Victoria to some extent. This story could have been a lot better if some part had been removed and I gave the story a 6 out of 10. This is the Abominable Snowman. I would say that this story is actually what introduced the issue of the most of the stories of this season. Good plots actually ruined by by having 6 parts because every story apart from Tomb of the Cybermen was a 6 parter. It was scary anyway, but I do find that I found the story a bit boring, and it was paced really slow. We meet the Yeti and the Abominable, uh, we meet the Yeti and the Great Intelligence for the first time. They were okay, but for the Yeti, they looked more cuddly than scary, and this is something that's actually fixed in the in the story they returned in, which is the Web of Fear. And yeah, the acting was alright. I liked the culture, mini cultural aspects. The side characters were good, and. Acting was alright, as I think I mentioned before, but but my main issue of this story actually lies with the story length and the fact that I found the story a bit boring, so I give The Abominable Snowman a 7 out of 10. In 4th place is The Web of Fear, The Return of the Yeti, Travelers and the Great Intelligence. The plot was good, but the execution, in my opinion, could have been a lot better. And I actually do feel as if Web of Fear is slightly overrated because I know a lot of people actually like the story and I mean I like it as well but I do think there are stronger stories such as Tomb of the Cybermen and let's just say uh, Mind Rubber, Invasion and etc etc. But I do commend the story for the scary atmospheric mood they had and it really and it really helped make the story scary and as I mentioned before the Yeti was scary and they had an upgrade compared to the cuddly selves we saw in the vulnerable snowman. And we also have the first appearance of the Brigadier, who is actually known here as the Colonel because the unit wasn't actually formed yet. And he made a good debut, but I didn't really understand why they made his character so creepy, but they decided to like drop it mid story. But I, mean, I do feel this story could have been a lot better if it was a four parter, and I gave the story a seven and a half out of ten. In third place is Fury from the Deep. And I would say this is probably one of the scariest Doctor Who stories from the nineteen sixties. It's very tense and it's quite creepy as well. And I can understand why the Aussies decided to remove the scary clips, which ironically they survive in the story. The performances are great, especially Deborah Watling, as this is her final story as Victoria. And the departure, I would say, is pretty much one of the saddest companion departures ever, and because of the acting that went behind with her, Jamie, and. To some extent, the Doctor. The Reed Creature was actually very scary and I really liked it. I liked how the Reed Creature was so mysterious. You didn't really see what it actually looked like in the telestamps. But we actually do see what this looks like in the animation. And 
And there were some other scary scenes, uh, scary iconic scenes, such as the infamous scene where Mr. Crook and Mr. Quill act, and Mr. Crow attack Maggie with the gas from their mouths, which is a surviving scene also. And the animation I see was quite good. It could have been better, but I still enjoyed it. But but it's a very enjoyable story, and it's definitely one of Charlton's best. And I gave the story a nine out of ten. In second place is the Enemy of the World. This story is simply phenomenal. This is one of the most action-packed stories at Doctor for Doctor Who at this point because of the whole James Bond feel this story actually had. The side cast were phenomenal. There were some iconic moments, and it wasn't a moment that actually lagged. And more importantly, it was a nice little break from the usual science-y Doctor Who stuff. Doctor Who thing actually does. Thing Doctor actually does, and and it definitely shows that Doctor Who can actually do more than just historicals or just basic sci-fi. It can just do as they proved in this as they proved in this story. It can do spy fiction, and 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 Salamander did a very good job here, and he was obviously played by Patrick Charlton. I would say that this. It's definitely one of Charlton's best performances in this, as his role as the Doctor, and and Doctor Who overall because he was actually playing both the Doctor and Salamander and he did a really good job and and I gave that story a nine out of ten, and finally in first place, Tomb of the Cybermen. Woohoo! I love this story. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant and it's perfect in my eyes. The Cybermen were awesome. They were, we had very iconic scenes, scary scenes and emotional scenes as well, such as the scene where the Doctor was talking about Victoria. They were checking up on her during, because she just pretty much joined the TARDIS at that point. Right, and the acting from all three, three of the main cast were quite good. Even though Jim, he didn't really do much, but he's still impressed. Yes, and I like the scene where Victoria actually shot the cyber matter, and I like, and I absolutely love the scene where the cyber were just coming out of their tombs. It was just, it was simply iconic. I mean, I can see why so many people like the story. And I forgot to mention in my main review about the Cleg and Captain, the main villain, though the secondary villains of this story. I mean, they were very good. I loved how mysterious Captain was, and she was, she had a bit of a cheeky side to her. I remember there was one time she was trying to look Victoria up in. In one of the, t- in the cyberman, t- t- the cyber conversion tomb or something like that, and she had this mischievous smile on her face. I just loved that. And obviously, we had, we have Cleek. He was just, he was dusted. He was equally as dustedly, but not as not not so much mis- mischievous. But he was quite good, and and he was an amazing side villain. And I liked the scene where he was with the doctor, and the doctor was like, "Now I know that you're mad, trying to prove." trying to find out what his actual actual plan was. I mean, it was pretty good. And I obviously like how he was ambitious and how he wanted to actually take over the Cybermen. And, and I think he was probably one of the first side villains to actually want to at least control the Cybermen. And I gave that story a 10 out of 10. So to sum up, I think season 5 is a great season, but... Out of the f- out of the three of the seven stories in this season, I would actually consider it to be Charlton's best. And the other four, they were good in a way, but they're quite weak, and they're probably low on my overall list of Charlton stories. And they all would have benefited if they were all at least four parters, to be honest with you. And and had and probably would have at least some parts cut out from their respective stories. So I would give. Season 5, a 7.5 out of 10. So, ladies and gents, that's it for Season 5. My next review will be Season 6, the, the start of Season 6, The Dominators, Charlton's final season. And, and I'll be doing the James Bond review in November, starting my James Bond reviews in November when No Time Today is about to come out. So, thanks for watching this ranking. Let me know what you thought, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.